Hey everybody and welcome back to Gal. In this video, I'm going to tell you about all of the Adobe audio and video updates that I learned about at IBC last week. But first, here's a montage of my experience at IBC. All of the Adobe updates that I'm going to be telling you about are coming this fall. They're not released yet. So this is what you should expect. The first major update is to the Lumetri color panel. So now you can actually stack several instances of the Lumetri color effect within the Lumetri color panel as layers. So you can turn off different instances all within the Lumetri color panel. So that way you don't have to go back to the effects controls panel and turn off the effect there, saving you steps. Secondly, there are now five new curves that will allow you to selectively color grade. There is hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus luma, luma versus saturation, as well as saturation versus saturation. So what does this mean and how do you use it? Well, think of the second parameter as influencing the first. So for example, with hue versus saturation, that allows you to control the saturation of a hue. And a hue is just a fancy word for color. For example, with this parameter, what I can do is I can select a color using the dropper tool. So let's select a color of this woman's skin that Adobe provided. And then what this will do is it will allow you to saturate or desaturate just this color. And to do this, you can hold shift and move the center point here up or down. And up is saturation and down is desaturation. You can also widen or narrow this color range just by clicking and moving these points here. And you can also click and add a point so it's really flexible. You can also sample another color within the same image. For instance, here you can grab the sky and then also move the saturation up and down to your liking. And of course, up at the top at Lumetri Color, you can turn the effect off to see what it looked like before and after. Another innovation that you might see is that there's a bar, a scroll bar at the bottom here. So you're able to move the hue, the color, into a visible range so you can easily make adjustments. So the same thing for hue versus hue. You can change the hue of an existing hue, which just means that you can change the color of an existing color in your image. So in this example that Adobe gave me from IBC, you can change the color of somebody's clothing in an image. For example, if you wanna change these dresses here to the pink color that we see in sort of the background, what we need to do is select the color of that dress that we want to change and then select the center dot to move it up and down the color spectrum. So you see this line here and it tells you what the colors will be. So if we move down, you will go into the orange and even the yellow and then below that the green and the blue. And if you move up, you will first see the red, pink, and then purple and blue. So this will allow you to easily change the hue or the color you want to match it to other colors in your scene. You can see it does a fantastic job. And now the dresses all look like that pink color and before they were orange. And then of course, if we move down, there's hue versus luma. And what this does, it allows you to adjust the brightness of a particular hue. So you can create more contrast in the sky. So let's say by darkening a specific blue color. And then there's luma versus sat. And this allows you to adjust the saturation of a bright area. So if there's an overexposed area in your sky, you can bring in more warmth or saturation into that bright area. And lastly, there's saturation versus saturation. And Patrick Palmer from the Adobe team refers to this as kind of acting like vibrancy. This will allow you to select a color in your image and allow you to boost the saturation or reduce the saturation of that particular color's saturation. And next up are updates to motion graphics templates. So for motion graphics templates that are designed in After Effects now, there's a new UI grouping. So you can now toggle down easily to adjust parameters. 
and something that everybody's been waiting for. For After Effects Design motion graphics templates, you can now add font parameter control. So you can adjust the font to any font type from a drop down, as well as adjust the style, which is huge. And also, there's a new update to data driven motion graphics templates that allow you to adjust the content of a template by using a spreadsheet. And here is Bill Roberts from Adobe that I met with to talk a little bit about Adobe data driven motion graphics templates. One of the things that really helps, and particularly in a broadcast environment, is if you have to have that look, you want to make it so it's just easy to type in a name. Mm -hmm. How could we get better than that? We can make it so that the name doesn't get spelt wrong. So one of the big things we've added in is data-driven motion graphics templates. So this is, I'm getting a fabulous response from broadcasters. So literally you have the same motion graphics template, but literally you point it at a CSV, a TSV, or a JSON file, uh -huh. and all of the data fields will populate. It will give you a little you know, overview of where it's gonna populate, but your, your motion graphics template is updated right away. And there's also updates to the Essential Sound panel. So there's a new denoiser slider that works a lot better than the old denoiser slider, which was based on the adaptive noise reduction technology. And here is a clip of Jason Levine demoing what it sounded like with the previous adaptive noise reduction technology. And you apply this adaptive noise, this is what it would sound like. And then everything would be quiet and awesome. The problem is if you had cuts in there, every time there was a cut, you'd hear because it had to adapt and learn every time. To that I say <laughs> So Adobe licensed a new algorithm technology that's very complicated, but it works very cleanly and it allows you to choose different frequency ranges. So if you wanted to focus on removing noise from higher frequency levels, you can do that or even lower frequency levels or mid range. So it works really nicely. And I also met with Mike Russell, awesome guy that runs a music radio creative channel and his own channel, just Mike Russell. And here's what he had to say about the new tools in Premiere and Audition. So new in Audition, I'm really excited and I think video producers are going to be really excited about denoise and de-reverb. So we're recording right now on a show floor. You might be able to get rid of some of the sounds in the background using denoise. Or you might be able to get rid of some of the sounds in the background using denoise. You might be able to get rid of some of the sounds in the background using denoise. Uh, we've got a professional lab set up at the moment, but if you had like a, a shotgun mic or a mic that was slightly off and you had some echo going on, de-reverb is really going to make your life better. But also, uh, if you hop over to Adobe Audition, if you take your Premiere sequences and pull them into the multi-track of Audition, now you're gonna have brighter colors. Yeah. So this is all coming. And lastly, but certainly not least, there is now support for 180 degree VR video stereoscopic and ambisonic sound, which is 360 immersive sound that you can capture. So there was already support for 360 video, but if you wanna shoot in 180 degree, which there are cameras out there on the market that allow you to do that, you can now edit that in Premiere Pro easily. And Jason Levine at IBC demoed how you can edit in an anaglyph format, but you can also have the option to turn that off using the program panel controls. And also I actually got to put on an Oculus headset and I was able to actually add spatial markers to 180 degree video inside of Premiere Pro with the headset on. So you can actually control the timeline and set spatial markers. So if I'm turning the other direction, you can see where that marker is. And then in Premiere Pro, you can easily identify those markers. So I haven't used 180 degree format yet, but if you're interested in that, let me know. And I'll see if I can do a full tutorial sort of explaining how that works. So just to recap, there is updates to Lumetri color panel with the selective color grading. There's updates to motion graphics templates. We can now have font controls, which is awesome. There's the new, denoiser and de-reverb effect inside of the essential sound panel. And of course there's VR 180 and there's some speed updates to the performance of using H.264 format inside of Premiere Pro. So if you want any more in-depth tutorials on any of these features, just let me know in a comment below and let me know what you guys think of it. And it's coming out later this fall and I'll be sure to let you guys know when that's available. Thanks again for watching you guys and for your support and stay creative and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.